We start with our newsmaker segment and check in with a Kansas City, Missouri council member about some of the many issues facing those 13 elected officials. Joining me for that discussion is Councilwoman Alicia Kennedy, who represents the 5th District. Among her council assignments, she serves as chair of the Public Safety Committee. Councilwoman Kennedy, welcome to Ruckus. Thanks for coming in. Thank you for inviting me. How would you describe the role of the Public Safety Committee? Is it an oversight role? And if so, what are you overseeing? Well, um, this council term, we've combined neighborhoods and public safety, safety uh, which previously was neighborhoods and healthy communities and public safety separately. So um, the overall well-being and safety of, of the residents of Kansas City, um, we deal with issues ranging from um, the violence prevention coalitions to updates from Kansas City Police Department, as well as dealing with public health issues um, and proactive measures. Is the fire department part of your jurisdiction? Absolutely. So your committee oversees those areas that spend the largest part of the city's budget. That would be true. Uh, will you and your committee be involved in selecting a new Kansas City, Missouri police chief? Well, as you know, the city of Kansas City does not have local control. Right. Uh, that's, Do you uh, think it should? Well, I think at some point we need to figure out how we get there, um, being the only We're trying to figure that out for 50 years, haven't we? Well, I think we're at a good place because with the selection of a new chief, more than likely he's probably going to come from somewhere where they did have local control. Uh, and I think they'll be able to bring some best practices to our uh, city on how we begin to incorporate that. So you think the new chief will be selected from outside the ranks of the current police department? Um, that is a significant possibility. Do you want that to be the case? Would that be your preference? I think we need to have the best qualified person to be able to lead our city. Is race or ethnicity a factor in selecting the new chief? I, I do believe cultural competence is a factor. Now, what does that mean? That means someone who is aware of the differences in the different cultural aspects and the racial challenges that uh, a municipality of this size deals with uh, and being willing to be open to addressing those issues in a forward-thinking manner. Uh, was the NOVA program, you were part of that, I guess, the no violence? I was in the uh, prosecutor's system? office at its infancy, yes, that's correct. You, you were the uh, assistant prosecutor and assistant prosecutor Yes, and I had County. the privilege of working on special projects in the prosecutor's office with Gene Peters Baker, um, mostly community-based, proactive uh, law enforcement measures. Uh, after the lengthy discussions about violence in Kansas City, were there any conclusions reached by the people investigating it? Well, I think that the conclusion is there's more work to be done and there it's going to require some uh, more uh, purposeful collaboration between all the partners that are addressing this issue. Uh, the number we got from the task force was there's over $30 million a year uh, in public dollars invested in violence prevention in Kansas City. Uh, and how are we going to leverage those resources to work together to improve our outcomes? Any explanation for why we have the frequent homicides that we have in Kansas City? Uh, I, there, there's no one answer, but uh, I do believe there are layers of it. And is, so, is there any way to prevent them? Any, any activity police can engage in to prevent homicides? They're usually acts of passion, aren't they? You know, we've had homicides since the beginning of time in biblical days, and yeah. so I don't think you prevent them all together, but we, do, we can reduce the occurrence of it, and the CDC has taken some very um, thoughtful, methodical approaches of dealing with curing the violence spread ec epidemic of the thought process and cultural norms of violence in communities. And I think as we begin to incorporate some of those strategies, we'll begin to see reductions uh, in violence in, in these in targeted populations. Let's touch on some other topics. Uh, the streetcars just had their first anniversary, big celebration, a lot of good public relations. Do you want to see the streetcar line continued out and, to the uh, plaza and beyond? It's got to go somewhere. Well, is that where it should go? Is that what money should be spent on? Well, I think we have a broad range of needs, but the, when you talk about the cost and the return on investment, it needs to go along an uh, area where you're going to have immediate impact of economic uh, return. Uh, Crown Center is excited about the opportunity to go further. Uh, the plaza, obviously. Uh, I would like to see it go as far as to the Bannister Complex, uh, down the trolley track corridor, up 85th Street and end it uh, along 87th Street and 435. Down to 30 seconds, so two quick questions and two really quick yes or no kinds of answers. Are you convinced there will be an 800 room downtown convention hotel? I think we've got a lot of work to do. The initiative petitioners have begun their process and we just have to make sure we convince the voters that this is ideal for Kansas City and we're going to handle the finances responsibly. Are we going to see a one terminal new Kansas City International in the next several years? I believe so. Vote in November? I believe so. All right. Thank you very much. Good to meet you. Thank you for coming in. Thank you. That is Kansas City, Missouri Council Member Alicia Kennedy. Now let's meet the panel and...
start a ruckus.